Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to deal with grounding. Uh, the idea is to, after we compute all our IK information, that when we're dealing with the leg and the limbs, like the leg specifically, we're going to check the data to see if, let's say if it goes through the ground, like if the end effector is under the ground and we need to fix it so that the end effector is touch is right above the ground where the foot needs to be. Um, you might be, in, in case you don't get it, uh, if I do a quick Google search for IK grounding in Unity, um, I find some good images. So there's like, here's one image where it kind of shows you like, like this one, like the center one, it's, it's grounded. Like instead of the, 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 this foot going through the surface, it actually goes up and twists and same thing with, uh, with the walking. So, um, here's another good example where you're animating and, um, you have one foot touching the ground and the other one isn't, but let's say you want to be able to ground it. Like, like during this animation, that foot should be planted. So you can use the, the grounding in reverse. Instead of going above the ground, you can be going toward the ground. So you can change the IK so this way now it's facing down. And like in this case, when, you're, when you change the IK leg limb, you can then update the, the foot. So this way the foot's pointing in a better direction, which would do like... Um, like it, like a uh, the parallel, not is it parallel? Perpendicular to the to the normal of the of the ground. So if the ground has a normal direction, you want the perpendicular direction, and that would be your uh, uh, the your new look direction for your foot. IK. Uh, and one more example, and like this one, like it's both feet should be touching the ground but that one goes right through the steps so ik moves the leg up just a little bit so this way you have um, more realistic things so that's what kind of what we're dealing with so that's what i call about grounding we're going to try to ground our foot in some fashion so if i get rid of a lot of those examples so i, I told you in previous videos that the the legs for robo dino is long so they go f fairly low um, I use a constraint to actually keep it like above, right above the ground. But in this now and today we're going to deal with grounding. So we're so we're going to do the animation, but at the same time we're going to try to ground everything. Um, so so that's what we have here. So to do grounding, so first thing I did was I go into Roborex and I take away its limitation, and I'll explain why I have limitation built uh, built in on top of that. Um, you, you'll probably see the difference. Um, what else? So, so, get, so I'm disabling the, the, the constraints. So this way the, the legs go straight to the ground. Uh, and then we're going to go into our limb function and I added a new parameter called grounding. So it's like how much distance above the ground, what's the limit, like what's the constraint above the ground it needs to be like the Y axis, um, direction. So if it's zero, I'm not going to do any grounding. If there is a value, then I'm going to apply grounding uh, to the IK of the foot. And let's see. And I think I'm just hacking out a way at it because I'm not actually pointing at a specific foot. Uh, I should have looked at this beforehand. Oh, okay. So that's what's going on. I, I thought I was, I built it a different way. Never mind. Oh, so what it is, is that currently I set up the target and then, um, apply grounding actually just updates that target value. So it's, so it just really just, that's what I'm doing. Okay. I was thinking something else. <laughs> I build this thing so many times. I forget how it works sometimes. So that's it. So now we're going to do grounding. We're going to basically pass in the Y limit. Uh, if the Y limit is greater than the Y, we return because it's not below the ground, so we want to ground it. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get a shortcut for target. So I'm gonna say this dot target. So I get the starting position and position, and that's it. So that's what we have first. So that's this is this is our IK information that exists right now, <clears throat> that we computed from the thing. so so without the the constraints. This is where the IK would be in relation to this foot. Cause as you can see, this foot, this leg is almost completely um, extended. So there's very little um, knee bending in that aspect. So the leg is really almost fully extended. 
All right, so so to um, to really compute, we need to get this white line, a white white circle, to be above ground. We need it to be above ground. So the idea is that the real concept is that we need to move this straight up the line. Just move it straight up that line, and to to do it is. It to me was a little tricky, but then I came up with a simple solution is that um, is using the Y as a scale. Because the thing is that we know where Y is. We know what the Y position is. We don't know what the X and Z position is on the line, but we know exactly the Y position we want to be on that line. So on that line, I want that Y position to be that limit, that limiter, which is like 0.1. So I wanted to be 0.1, which would probably be like right here somewhere. So that's, I know where the Y is. So I take that Y and I subtract it from the starting Y, our starting point on that line. Then I take the distance from the, the from the, the end point, which is our end effector and our starting point. So it's the length in the Y axis divided by how much distance is traveled since um, the um, since the start? So that creates me a nice scale value. So basically, it gives me that scale value. So I'm trying to find y within this range uh, of minimum and maximum because a is our minimum and b is our maximum. That's the maximum that our ik line our ik line is supposed to be. So we want somewhere in the middle. So we get that scale value. Uh, now to get the x and y, uh, the x and z, we now do the same thing. We say b x minus a x, which is our end x minus our start x. So basically, get that range, multiply by our scale, and then add it to the start. So it's basically we're kind of doing like a lerp. We're we're basically lerping in one D, um, and s is technically our t value in our uh, in our lerping idea so we're this is this is a different type of lerp um, so uh another like to me i probably actually you know what i probably didn't do this mm, yeah probably, i probably there's different types of lerps there's i'm using this equation and now that i'm thinking about it like improvements the the lerp i would probably use because that's that that's better would be to be a dot x times uh, 1 minus s and maybe we'll try it out we'll know plus b dot x times s so that would be a nice that would be a much better lerp equation to use than this equation uh, but that's what we're, what we're doing so let's just see how this works and and and, and go right now so, and then we keep the Y because we know where Y is. So everything is based off the, of the scale of Y. And we did this with the hips. This is how we scale the, the movement at X and Z. So it's the same concept and idea, but it's apply, It's not applied for movement. It's kind of applied for this finding a position on this line. Uh, let's see, what else do we do? So I can take away that return. Then I can put it right here. So this is going to show our new end position because this is we're updating our end position. This is our IK target, our end effector. So refresh. There you go. So the white line is our original IK direction, uh, and this is our new our new IK end because that's where we want to be. It's right above the ground at the limit that we want it to be at. So if I get rid of this and just let it go. Um, since I'm manually updating the target, I have to manually update other things. Ideally, the smart thing to do is for me to create a function that says update end effector. And this way I can put, push in the new value and then it would then recompute things that need to be recomputed. Like I said, this is kind of like, this is my prototype. Like I think in the previous video I talked about you prototype, you make a mess, and then later on you kind of just optimize and see how to improve it. And like I said, but to for me to change my end effector, I need to change my length squared and my length of the thing because 
my the length now has changed it's from yellow to white is now has to be the length from yellow to orange because that's the new ik length that i need to um to use because remember everything is in triangles so i need to know the length of that one side of the triangle and this is kind of how i do it i do the square uh i get the the squ uh, length squared then i do the square root because i know i think i talked about this even the first video and i screwed up somewhere but this is where it is uh, so if you saw me if you remember me like saying that i did this but then when i looked at code that's not how it works this is where it is <laughs> so this is how i compute i do i compute it for the ik target and again like i said there is more better ways to do this um uh you know smarter object oriented ways of doing this but i'm doing it this way for now and if i click save uh do i have any more uh returns no so now remember this is apply grounder so apply grounder modify the data that we we put into target so now modified it now it's going to be used by the ik solver and if i let go now the foot is now grounded even though i told it to go there and the other leg uh let's see is the other leg still working yeah i am wait no it's apply rig uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still doing both legs. Only one leg uh, I have grounding applied. So I have grounding applied to only one leg. So that's one leg. And the other leg is where it's supposed to be. That's probably the IK direction it needs to be in relation to the other foot. Um, so now if I want to, I can just animate it. So I just turn on the animation instead of render on mouse. And people, uh, you might not notice that this is like a, a feature recently, uh, how, I, um, how I do this. Um, I have two render uh, functionalities. I have one that renders on mouse, so that means I don't have a render loop. The rendering only happens when I move the mouse. So this means it, it's better for me when I was working on my Surface Pro. I have a new computer now, thank, thanks to... Uh, um, someone <laughs> thank you very much and um but for that one like if i had the, the loop running sometimes it would make my my browser slow or whatever so i built it where i only render when i move the mouse so this way i'm not i don't have the browser constantly working 30 frames or 60 frames per second while i'm editing code um, normally if the browser is hidden or not active uh, the frame should actually freeze so it shouldn't be actually running but like I said, I made it so this way, if I have two screens open at the same time, uh, it's not running and wasting processing power. Especially if I'm on, uh, if I'm on a battery. Um, if I want to look at things, it's like it's, it's more battery friendly for me, for my laptop. All right, then. And there we go. And there's our grounder. So maybe it'd be more fun to see RoboRex if he wasn't such a skinny little skeleton uh so so i need a material and i just want to load in the debug view the debug view means mesh and the skeleton view there we go now the only problem with grounding the way i have everything built is that as you can see the the animation isn't perfect because it's not using that full extent because um, it's not using that length um, if i were to take grounding away actually no well, first things first uh let's let's test this hypothesis uh ch -ch -ch -ch. well since i have everything written this way already for x so how about we do this so let's see if this is the better lerping function and does it work just fine refresh x should be acting all crazy nope that orange that orange circle stays on that line it does not deviate from that line so ideally this like I said if I were going to do this I would actually use this z s s s z 
This is the better lerping equation. When I did this, I didn't even realize I was writing a lerping equation. <laughs> and there you go. The new lerping equation works just fine. And like I said, it's more efficient. Now, the one, uh, let's see, you got. Now, the one thing, like I said, that just pay attention to how that back leg works when it's grounded. It's, it's only an issue because of how this um, model has three bones and I'm using a certain thing and I'm adding constraints and whatever else. So as you can see, when the foot goes back, it doesn't, it doesn't do a full good animation where it like lifts up off the ground. It kind of slides across the ground because I'm trying to ground it. Uh, what we need at some point in the future is to deal with these constraints in a better way. Uh, but like I said, this is something I kind of just did for funsies. So if I add the constraint back in and take away the, well, you know what, leave the ground there. I don't think I really need it. Do I? Maybe I do. I don't know. I feel like this is making me look like a fool. <laughs> Refresh. I think the leg contracts a little bit more. It contracts a little bit more, so it's not sliding off the ground as much. But again, this is this this walk animation wasn't meant for humans. Maybe if I had um, this is where we start to in the future we'll start dealing with additives. So for this case, if I wanted to fix uh, Roborex, I would do a little additives into it, where I'll probably change the scale dynamically, um, build some additive functions that I can add, so the animation can act a little bit better um, in relation to this skeleton instead of using it purely what we have. Um, but there you go. But like I said, we saw before grounding, we, we bring it up on that line and it's just good and go. And that's really the bare idea concept behind grounding is just, you, you just move it, move it on that line, just that IK line. Um, all those pictures I showed you, you don't see it because you're not visualizing the data. And when you visualize the data, it makes perfect sense once you can visualize it. And that's really the uh, one key thing I can really uh, tell people is that if you're dealing with a lot of math, especially 3D math, try to visualize as much as you can, like put dots and lines as many places as you can, because it really does help. Because once you start seeing the lines and then certain point in the dots, then you can start cr coming up with creative ideas. Like you can say, well, I need to move it to this part of that line. And that's when I eventually kind of went and unbeknownly to myself at the moment, I was writing an equation. I was writing an alerting equation. Uh, that's when you do math at night. Sometimes things work out and you just don't realize what the hell you're doing. And then, uh, then you realize that's a lerp function. Why am I using that lerp equation? That's not a good lerp equation, <laughs> but, um, I digress. So it's 18 minutes, uh, three minutes longer than I wanted for this video, but hope you learned the idea of grounding. Uh, and the mathematics behind it. Um, for the rest of the series, I won't be using grounding. I'll, I'll have it turned off. And it, like I said, this is kind of like, that's more like version one prototype of grounding. Like I haven't, I haven't really worked too much with it, but I just, I wanted to kind of work with it a little bit to when I was working on this with Dino because his legs go through and I wanted to see if there's better ways to, um, to get the animation working better. Uh, or I tried to use ground to see if it, it would improve the animation anyway. And it wouldn't, and uh, I think to me, like I to me feels like the, the leg doesn't contract, doesn't contract as much as it should for that specific animation. But like I said, additives and things we can do in the future will then help improve things. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the next video will be the spine. That one might be a little bit long. Um, the code is long, uh, but it follows the same idea that we've done. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy yourself. Hope you. I'm I'm showing the tricks uh, of some ideas how to build your Unity IK rig um, yourself. You can do it in Unity, uh, Go Dot, um, whatever framework you like, or your own personal uh, thing. Uh, hopefully, in the end of this series, I will have a 3JS version, so people can just download and use the 3DS version if they want. Um, uh, I'm personally going to keep using fungi unless I need professional work and then I have to use 3DJS. So yeah, it's okay. That's it. I don't know <laughs> enough talking. So yeah, please like and subscribe. Hope you're having fun and I'll see you in the next video about the spine.